What is going on guys? Kosho here at the Lions Den located in Colmar, PA. And in this video, we're going to be covering five tips on how to improve your bench press. Now, I'm not going to be giving you these tips because I can't speak enough about the bench. I'm not that great at it. So what I did is got Brad Arbick back on the channel. He's the guy I go to when it comes to powerlifting and specifically the bench press because he has a great bench. So Make sure you guys listen to the tips that Brad has to give you and head over to his channel and subscribe to him. He has a wealth of knowledge. So without further ado, kicking it over to Brad. Hey Joe, thanks so much for the introduction. I really do appreciate it. And thanks again for having me back on the channel so soon. Uh, as Joe mentioned, he and I talked about um, some, some different ideas for, um, you know, to be able to help you guys. And one of the things that we thought might be beneficial is to do a little video on how to improve your bench press. So a little caveat before we get started. What I'm not gonna do is get into some of the mechanics of actually how to bench press. The, uh, I guess the, the presupposition here is that you guys already have some basic fundamental knowledge of bench press. And so what I'm gonna focus on here is five tips that are a little bit more nuanced uh, that will help you increase your bench press um, if you're able to utilize them and incorporate them into your, into your training style. So I'm on the way to the gym right now and uh, I'm gonna do my own bench training and I'm gonna demonstrate some of these ideas for you, you know, as we go. So let's get into it. All right guys, so the number one tip, right? Getting right into it. I don't even need a gym or anything to be able to talk about this, this first tip. And the, the tip is don't max out all the time. So one thing that you see a lot of young lifters do, a lot of people do in general, is they're constantly testing strength. If you really want to be able to build up strength long term, it takes a long time to develop. Strength doesn't happen on accident. And so what I would say, a number one tip for, for anyone that's out there is to stop maxing out all the time. You know, I know that you're curious and you want to kind of see where you stand, but realistically, you should limit your, your, your testing times to maybe sometimes like something between one to maybe three to four times per year. So maybe like once a quarter, probably at the most. And the reason why you want to do this is for a couple couple fold. First off, it takes a long time to build strength. So if you're constantly testing yourself, it's like that kind of one step forward, one step back kind of thing. And you're not really building strength when you're testing strength, right? You're not gonna you're not gonna get stronger after off of hitting your one rep max. That's not how that works. You get stronger off of the, the you know the submaximal work hitting that volume. Second reason is it's not too dissimilar from say like a car, right? If you're constantly redlining the engine in your car, you have a greater chance of blowing something, right? Same, same for your body. The constant one rep maxing, you know, week in, week out, that's taking your body to its limit, right? So the point that you reach failure, that's essentially redlining your body. And if you continuously redline your body, you're opening yourself up for injury. And if you want to get strong long term, it really needs to be about injury avoidance. So stop maxing out all the time. All right, so I made it into the gym and uh, gonna start getting myself set up. And this brings in tip number two. So tip number two for increasing your bench press is actually warm up. Um, so typically what I like to do is either run one mile, um, that's just kind of a normal, you know, comfortable pace, or I'll bust out the jump rope and I'll do some jump roping. The idea is to get your body moving, get blood flowing, warm up your body, um, and get ready to do what you're about to do. Um, I see a lot of people come in and kind of go jump into whatever they're doing cold turkey um, without any warm up whatsoever. Um, so that's not to say you should exhaust yourself. Uh, I'm not saying go run a marathon or run as, as fast or as hard as you can. Um, but for me, say like one mile is pretty comfortable. I'll run one mile at maybe something between an eight to maybe a 10 minute mile pace. And just to kind of get my body warm and, and ready, to, ready to rock, get a nice patina of sweat. And um, it's pretty comfortable. So today I'm gonna jump rope and my jump rope looks like this. Typically with jump rope, I'll do sets of like 50. Um, so knock out 50, take a break, another 50, take a break. And I'll just do that till I work up a nice little sweat, get my heart rate up, get my breathing going, and then I'm ready to, to move into the, the bench and get ready to rock. So let's transition. So my third point, or my third tip is get traction, right? So being able to have traction when you bench is important to be able to, to deliver power from you to the bar. Um, so if you're 
if you lack traction, you lack the ability to transfer power to the bar. Um, so a couple things you can do is you can use a band if you're in a training environment, um, and we'll, we'll show you the setup with using a band for just a, in just a second. Um, you can also get like an A7 shirt with the silicone discs on the back to give you a little bit more grip and traction on the bench. Um, or if you have the, a good bench available that has uh, you know good grip to it, using a bench that actually has the um, the upholstery that has like good grip to it, like a Thompson Fat Pad or something like that would be most preferable if you had that available to you. But if you don't have any of that available to you, you can use a band, and I'm gonna show you that setup right now. So you're gonna to wanna to use something that has a little bit of width to it. So you can use one or you can use multiple, but, um, but one of these bands that about this wide is usually pretty good. You said a what? Just like that. And this, this rubber gives you extra traction so that when you're driving and you're actually getting ready to press, you're not gonna slide on the bench. It gives you some friction. So um, it's important to have this, this little bit of extra traction because it gives you more ability to transfer power to the bar. It's kind of like the, the same thing um, if you can conceptualize what it might be like to try to squat on ice. You wouldn't want to do that, right? Because you don't have good traction to be able to deliver power to the bar. So squatting without, or I'm sorry, benching without traction is like squatting on ice. I wouldn't do it. All right, so the next major important thing to talk about is leg drive. Um, so what I see a lot of beginners do is they fail to use leg drive. Um, so incorporating leg drive is an important thing, right? And that just means, you know, maintaining tension and tightness in your thighs and driving with the leg. Um, you want to imagine that with, if you have leg drive and you're, um, you're doing it appropriately, if you weren't holding weight, that you would slide off the end of the bench. Or even move the bench in some instances. So it, it really is just an extension of the leg, right? You want to imagine you're, you're doing a leg extension, but not allowing your foot to slip. Once people start incorporating leg drive, one of the mistakes that they make is not using continuous leg drive. So it's this off on, off on kind of looking um, leg drive. And so it tends to look like this. Where you see this very, um, very dramatic rocking of the body. That's not ideal because you're actually relaxing at some point in time and then re retensioning. So what would be more preferable is if you stayed under tension the entire time. So legs continuously driving so you don't have that movement. Anytime that you have movement, you have loss of power. All right, so the last tip, tip number five, is about maintaining body position, right? So it, if you think about it, it makes sense that having a good position to be able to drive from gives you the most power. But if, if you don't have a stable position, it's hard to deliver power. So two ways that you can make sure that you maintain your position is two things. One breath, right? So basically anything under 10 reps, you should be able to maintain one breath. Because if you breathe out, you're given a position and you're never gonna get that back under load. So big breath, maintain position. Second thing is, stop moving around. So you see people in the gym doing happy feet when they, when they bench press, you're losing power. You're bleeding off energy and you're undermining your ability to be able to drive and deliver power to the bar. So hold your breath and don't move. So I'm gonna try to demonstrate that right now. This is my working set with uh, 340. One breath. Up. So that's 10 reps with about 67% one breath. As you begin to do it, if it's something that you've never done before, you're gonna feel a little bit of panic because you're gonna want to breathe especially if you're used to breathing. But build up your, uh, your tolerance to it, just practice it. One breath, do not breathe out the entire time, and make sure you maintain position. So if you notice, my feet and my body weren't moving around, I was able to stay tight and concentrate power on driving that bar 
and that will really help improve your bench press. All right, guys, that's it. Um, that's the, all the tips that I have. So uh, we, we covered, you know, not maxing out all the time. Um, and that'll help make sure that you're making progress instead of constantly testing. You're not building when you're testing. Um, we talked about warm up, making sure that you're ready to do what you're about to do. So getting your body warm, getting blood flow, and then making sure you kind of get, uh, you know, your body primed is really, really important. We talked about traction, making sure that you have good grip and the ability to, to deliver power to the bar. Um, you know, not having traction on bench, like I said, is kind of the same thing as trying to squat on ice. Wouldn't want to do that either, right? We talked about leg drive. So incorporating leg drive is a step in the right direction, but incorporating uh, consistent and continuous leg drive throughout the duration of the movement it will make a big, big, big difference in your, uh, in your lifts. And then we also talked about body position. So body position is not moving around. So you see some people doing those happy feet like we talked about, uh, but also that, that big breath, one breath. If you're doing 10 reps or less, it'll make a huge difference in your benching. So those, those tips together will definitely improve your ability to deliver and transfer power from you to the bar. And you'll see um, increased efficacy in your bench pressing if you're able to incorporate all these. Joe, I just wanna thank you for the opportunity to be on the channel. Thank you so much for having me back. I hope that these tips have helped you and all the, the Lions Dead Pride. Um, that's what I'm calling your, your whole crew, other than subscribers, um, the Pride. But uh, yeah, I just hope that this helps in some way, shape, or form. Um, and if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'll be monitoring the, uh, the comments section and be able to respond if anybody has any comments or questions for me. And again, just thank you so much for having me around. Remember guys, no matter what it is you think you can't do, get in, train despite. You're either gonna find an excuse or you're gonna find a way. And I hope that you continue to find a way. Thanks for watching. See you around. Peace. Thank you so much, Brad. I really appreciate those tips for the bench press. I know they've helped me, and hopefully they're going to help some of you guys along your bench journey. So make sure you head on over and subscribe to Brad's channel. Check out all his videos, and tell him you are coming from Zach Strength's channel. I got to get going because it's time for me to go run a strongman competition at my gym called the Winter Wreckage, which is going to be the biggest strongman competition I've held to date with 85 athletes. That's crazy. So you know the deal. If you're new to the channel, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. But until then, guys, stay lean, me, strength, machine, and happy holidays. Peace.